President for the running back. Blitz going for the first play. We're hanging the seven of the old players. Leading 14 to 7. Third down. Has he caught it all? Just so clear. Right on target to David Sell. What's up guys, welcome back to another Top 25 Breakdown. Today we have number 20, West Virginia. They went 8-4 last season, mm -hmm. obviously because of a game, got canceled. And they did, I would say they did alright, but what do you think they did? Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's just an okay year. Uh, nothing to really brag about, but again, not a bad year. Yeah, obviously, and especially because they lost a lot of games that were very tight. Obviously, by oh, three or heartbreak, three. Heartbreakers. Three oh, points yeah. game, three uh, point like, game. Three point games. Just about every game or something like that? Uh, well, the Oklahoma State game was a four point game, but... Aside yeah. from that, they lost Oklahoma by uh, by three points, and then their loss to Syracuse was uh, was a drumming. So yeah, obviously Syracuse was a little better than them. But I yeah. would say that as, as um, well as the Iowa State. Iowa also, State was, was kind of a. Oh, sorry about that. But what, wasn't uh, Will Greer? Didn't he sit out for that game? For which game? The bowl game. I think he did because yeah. he wanted to focus on uh, oh. on the league. I think he did sit out. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't like that, but I mean, honestly, I can't. I can't really remember. But I want to say he did. Yeah, I'm I pretty sure he, he did. did. He did sit out. But uh, they did all right for the 2018. But obviously, they do have a lot of concerns for... I wouldn't say a lot, but just like a few concerns for the 2019 season. I think one of them being, uh, obviously, the loss of offensive production. Specifically, just Will Greer. I think that the quarterback, I think, does make a difference. I think they lose more than just Will Greer on offense. They're, yeah, but they obviously, Will Greer is one of the bigger pieces just because that's the quarterback. Yeah, and he, we, he at one point he was a Heisman uh, Heisman favorite. Yeah. He was a Heisman uh, contender, uh, and he, you can give him all his praise. But then again, uh, he didn't make the entire team. Either right. way, he was also complimented well with David Sills. We all know David Sills was one of the, one of the greater uh, receivers that uh, that West Virginia uh, has had in a while, as well as in the country, one of the best receivers in the country. Right. Uh, they also had uh, they're also losing Gary Jennings and Yad Yadni uh, Kajust. Kajust. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that. Yeah, he was a left tackle. Yep. Kajust. Yeah. Uh, but lose and uh, on top of that, losing the head coach. Yeah, oh, Dana Holgerson's a huge. He was, I mean, he did pretty well. I mean, obviously, I think it's, it's, it's not cool for a head coach to leave, especially when he knows that there's nobody left. Yeah, that's what he, I, like, everybody's thinking that like, well, since all my production has left, it's time for me to go. Like he couldn't, he didn't stay to fix it. So I'm, I'm, what I'm, what my like, I'm curious on the fact that what was he doing. While Will Greer was there, was he not recruiting people? I, I have no clue. Maybe he was just having a tough time recruiting. Maybe not, a lot of recruits don't want, just don't want to go to West Virginia. Yeah, that is very true. I mean, that could be a uh, possibility. But obviously, Dana Holgerson will be missed. The uh, West Virginia fan base has uh, has really kind of um, accepted accepted the new head coach. Yeah, uh, uh, his name Neil Brown. Everyone Neil Brown. I was, yeah. I, I was drawing I was drawing a blank here soon. Uh, Neil Brown from Troy, which and we all uh, I feel like we should all be aware of that. What Troy has been really good in the Sun Belt. They've been they've been handling, handling their business. Uh, ten win ten win seasons, and they got uh, they they got this guy from Troy, and I'm thinking that's it. That's that's in my in my eyes, it's more of a strength. Yeah, great you, coach. You said Neil Brown, right? Neil Brown. Neil Brown, and then he he did a good job of getting some good transfers coming in, and he did a good recruiting uh, a good job recruiting or what. He, what uh what left he had to do That's, yeah he pulled a lot of transfers a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of juco guys yeah uh no, some so notable as you know, austin kendall from oklahoma uh, as well as um a juco that was at east carolina um college or east carolina university i'm sorry was a uh, taj alston from that who first was at east carolina so. yeah they did a good job of getting some good transfers coming in and mm -hmm. also some juco guys um and but as for strengths uh they do have uh, a stacked uh, backfield, obviously, with uh, running backs like Kennedy McCoy, uh, Martel Petaway, and uh, Letty Brown, and also uh, the redshirt sophomore Alex Sinkfield. Obviously, that's that's extremely uh, helpful, especially for young for whoever the quarterback is going to be for mm -hmm. West Virginia, and also the offensive line. Uh, it'll help them off, uh, help them uh, obviously mm -hmm. take the take the pressure off them. As well as a as well as another strength on the other side of the ball is uh, the defense. Where they're actually looking pretty solid uh, from the yeah. spring game. They're, they're, they're. You can tell that they're already meshing. They're doing really well. I think there's a lot of leadership that that was still left over on the defense right. side of the ball. They do need to fill some holes, which most teams do. Uh, but this one's more notable with West Virginia. But um, yeah, they're. They, I think they're ahead of uh, of where the offense, uh, where they are uh, in comparison to the offense. So. Right. I think it's and it's so weird to talk about defense, especially in the Big Twelve. Because there's barely any half yeah, time. It's almost non-existent. Yeah, hopefully they'll get better this year. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see if uh, mm -hmm. there's defense ever in mm -hmm. the Big 12. 
Um, but I guess we'll see about that. Obviously, a lot of like, there's been a lot of pr- praise mm-hmm. about Josh Chandler, who's been the weak side linebacker at yep. uh, at West Virginia. So uh, we'll see how they do, especially in the new four two uh, system yep. that they have. Um, Which also, could also be a concern. Yeah, that with a new system, they they might they might uh, be out of alignment or you know might be, be be forgetting some schemes. But like I said, they are meshing well. So hopefully they're they're going to be on top of that this coming season. Right, and obviously with that comes some weaknesses. Uh, like you said, obviously the new defensive scheme is going to be a weakness. Yeah. Uh, just because they all have to be on the same page. I mean, it's pretty plain and simple. Um, and also I think quarterback is going to be an issue just because I mean they do have a transfer uh, from Oklahoma, uh, Kendall I think it was. Uh, he Austin should. Austin Kendall. Yeah. Yeah, Austin Kendall. So she he. He should uh, be the starter. Obviously, a lot of people think that he will be the starter. So uh, we'll see how well he does. Um, and also, oh, offensive line. Uh, offensive line, ha- like they have guys that have started games, mm-hmm. but like they're getting a lot of those guys have been changed positions. There's some of them are playing uh, guards that play tackle or mm-hmm. tackles that played guards. They're getting moved around, so it'll be very interesting to see how they do. Uh, in the 2019, yeah, and I, and I think that's uh, um, that's just that's tough. That's tough for to put your players in that position in the sense yeah. that they have to kind of learn on the fly, or, or they have to get adjusted to their new position. And if you keep interchanging them throughout the season, it's not going to work out for you uh, very well. Or I, my, I imagine it's not going to work very well at all. Right. Uh, so they do have holes to fill in the O line, but I think they're they're going to be able to protect Austin Kendall if he does win the starting position. Um, but uh, you know, aside from that, that's that's uh, yeah. For weaknesses, yeah, I think For that's weaknesses. that's. Mid- I mean, even though they lost a lot of people, I mean, their weaknesses are not that big of a like big holes. You know what I mean? They're not gaping. They're not. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, it's, <laughs> it's not like uh, uh, they can't be filled. They they can't be solved. Not problem. They can't be solved. Uh, but like like uh, like we said, like we mentioned before, they do have a new new coach. They do have other uh, supporting new supporting staff. So it's going to be tough to you know kind of answer the call in the sense that the coach is going to be demanding a, a, a you know a certain expectation which will be different from what the, may be different from what the, uh, what the players are are accustomed to uh as well as uh, just new schemes all around so it's, right. it's it's going to be tough for a team to really just kind of get back to the eight and four record or uh, you know a winning double digits so it's not it's, a, it's going to be tough overall yeah it's kind of hard it's really hard to gauge how well this team's going to be and how bad they're going to be really because right. of everything but obviously looking at their 2019 schedule i mean they start pretty easy with james madison so i mean that's a plus for them i don't know i don't know if you want to say that too say it's too easy uh, i mean james madison did win the fcs national championship a couple years ago like yeah. two years ago so i mean it's a formidable opponent james madison can hang with some d1 uh schools and i think they can they may be able to hang with west virginia just because west virginia has you know everything. Everybody's new. Every, every, every the uh, new faces from coaching staff to players. I think uh, and new schemes. I think James Madison hangs hangs uh, hangs with West Virginia, but I think West Virginia might pull it off. Then they have to have to go to Missouri, which I think Missouri is getting is going to be much better this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if they have a postseason ban, I think they'll play just as good as they mm-hmm. would with a, without it. Then they have to go. Then they host NC State yep. at Kansas, a bye, Texas, Iowa State, Oklahoma at Oklahoma. Uh, by at Baylor, Texas Tech, at Kansas State, Oklahoma State, and at TCU. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's you know we we like uh, just playing the Big Twelve. You're gonna play. You're gonna end up playing everybody. It's all. It's a, it's a whole round robin. But um, it's a tough schedule. It's a tough schedule for Especially West Virginia this year because again, I can't. I feel like we, everybody's new, man. And it's you just we don't have a gauge on whether or not they're gonna be good or whether they're gonna be really bad. Um, and also the fact that. Those these teams in the in the Big Twelve, they all have either the right coach or and the right quarterback right now, and they all know how to put up points. Like this is going to be the one mm-hmm. of the bigger issues for uh, West Virginia is can they maintain the level of like can they continue to pull up, put up points, especially when mm-hmm. they go up against a Texas, Oklahoma specifically, or a Texas Oklahoma Tech, State. yeah, because uh, all these teams they're all getting better. Baylor is getting better. They they won one game uh, two years ago. That last year they won seven games. That's a, that's a leap. Uh, they lost Art Bryles. They, they're, you know, teams are getting better. Iowa State is definitely, you know, jumping into the top twenty-five. You know, uh, maybe Kansas shocks everybody and starts winning like four or five oh, games yeah, less with, miles with less bit. miles. Yeah. You know, you you never know. Like these, I feel like a lot of uh, Big Twelve teams are just either the, either they're building, fa- they're lay, they lay down the foundation. Now they're building the house, uh, or uh, or they're just they just one year they just come out and they really surprise everybody. Um, you know, there's a lot of inconsistencies, I think, in the Big 12 uh, because of, uh, you know, 
defense is non-existent, but offense is you know is stellar. Yeah, it's just you know. Yeah, I think that's the one thing that you can count on Big Twelve is offense is going to be plenty. Yeah, if you if you ever watch a Big Twelve game, you're, you're going to be in for a treat because it's going to be back and forth, back and forth. So it's, yeah, um, obviously. But what do you think a worst case scenario is for this for this team? Worst case scenario for this Virginia team? Yeah, I'm I'm thinking maybe three or four wins. That's the worst case scenario. Three or four wins. They either go three and nine, four and eight in the regular season. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not looking good just because new staff, new players, uh, making sure, you know, it's going to be a problem with all this new scheme and everything, uh, making sure everybody's on the same page, They're making sure everybody's meshing, making sure uh, the, the culture in the locker room is where it needs to be and what it's supposed to be. So, yeah, um, I do think uh, they will. I, my worst case scenario is they go four and eight. I think uh, first year of a new head coach, I think it's going to be it's going to be a rough season. Let's be honest. It's going to be a rough season, especially with a new head coach yeah. and the loss of production on the, the both sides of the football and also the fact that you play in a conference where you have to put up points or else you're not going to win many games. You're going to get slaughtered. Yeah. Might get so embarrassed. I so. think four and eight is the worst case scenario. And then most likely scenario. What do you think most likely scenario? Would most be? likely, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm conflicted to say that they're going to get back to a bowl. I, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and say they get, they win five games, maybe a sixth game, which will make them bowl eligible. They might get, you know, beaten up in that, in that bowl game, which, right. whichever bowl game they go to. But um, you know that that's, that's you know a five a five and seven six and six record coming off of a, a season that you have all new personnel, I don't think that's too bad. Yeah, that's obviously really good, especially in the first year of a brand new coach and a brand, brand new, new system and everything. Especially from the coach jump, coming up from a group of five team to uh, a power five a yeah. power five team, so that's commendable and uh, that's just going to lay the foundation and hopefully they get better. Right, I do think I would say most likely for me is I think I do think that they go five and seven. I don't think they get that six win, but it's okay if you miss a bowl game mm -hmm. in your first year, it's okay. especially for uh, Neil Brown. I think is Neil Brown, right? Neil Brown. I do think it's okay to miss a bowl game your first year because you're still you're still trying to get the right guys in yeah. for your system and just kind of get everybody on the same page. Five and seven is not terrible. Um, I mean, we just saw what Scott Frost went four and eight. So I mean, he started picking up at the end of the season. Yeah, so I mean, it, I think I do think that they will eventually kind of click, but I do think it'll be a rough season first season for him, um, especially so especially because it seems like Dana didn't leave him anything. Yeah, because uh, let's be honest. Again, the question the question comes up is, did he did he recruit at all? Did he know from the did he know in the middle of the season that he's not coming back and just stopped recruiting? Yeah, he didn't he didn't do Neil Brown any favors. Yeah. Let's just say that. Uh, I think the best case scenario for them is obviously going to a bowl. I do, and then and, and that would be. Uh, going six and six uh, in the season, which is really good for them. Mm -hmm. um, you get that six win, you get to a bowl game. That's it. That's more practice time with your team, um, especially like in the postseason. So that's more practice time. Um, and then, yeah, and it's, and it's like a reward. You're like, yeah, it's, it's a reward not not only to the players but to the coach that it's your first year in a group of five uh, conference uh, or I'm sorry, a power five conference. And you get you got to a bowl your first year, and yeah. that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm and I'm thinking for best case scenario, uh, I'm thinking uh, that six and six record, maybe even seven and five. I, they might surprise you with No Brown's not a bad coach. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I, I'm, I mean, I'd like to I I like to think he's not, and I think he might surprise you with he might pull out a, a couple like trick plays here, might surprise and to yeah. to squeak out a couple of wins. But hey, a win's a win no matter what, and I'm thinking they could potentially win seven and five that's just that's just only the best case scenario yeah i do uh, i do think yeah that could be a possibility as well i do think um even with the losses like we say we just keep on telling you guys they lost everybody like yeah. it's no joke like they lost a lot of really good talent and yeah. to re like to just kind of reload those like, like those those positions yeah it's, it's tough. It's it's, it's it's especially because it's it's you're setting too high of expectations on the guy on the backups on the guys that are that are supposed to replace them. You're, you're, yeah. You can't be putting the expectation that you can't be thinking Austin Kendall needs to be playing at the same uh, same level that Will Greer was playing mid season when he was a Heisman contender. You can't expect the receivers to play uh, how Kenny Stills played. You you, you, just, you can't put the expectation on 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 the, the play, on these young guys because they're not the same guy. They're, they're they're just not the same person. So. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's different, and you have to work. You have to be able to work with with one yeah. another. And so. also, this team is going to be completely different than what the team last year was. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, a whole new different offense, whole new different uh, oh, yeah. defense. It might even change from air raid. It, yeah. it, came, it might not even be known as as as. as you know, they might be more uh, like a run heavy this year, just because of the running backs that they have. I think. I think they might. I think they're going to. They might have to just yeah. just to be able to stay within games. They might. They're going to have to really utilize that deep uh, running back, and it might be a running back by committee. 
type yeah. uh, type issue and yeah. let Austin Kendall kind of uh, throw a couple of dump passes. Maybe maybe if he's really feeling it, he might let one might let a couple loose down the field. We'll never know. But yeah, it's super hard to like gauge how well this team is gonna do just because they're really young. They're gonna be young and inexperienced and new faces. Yeah, just new new faces. everything really for West Virginia. And I think like uh, whether they go uh, obviously f they they go three wins or six wins mm -hmm. or whatever. It's gonna be an okay year for them because it's it's not like the, no one no one's expecting them to get to the playoff. No one's yeah. expecting them to win the conference. They all know that they got a new head coach. It's gonna be a tough year. I, the fan base, along with the staff, along with the players, just have to stick together, get through this year, and make sure they make sure that they get they're ready to go for uh, deeper in 2019 season as well as uh, getting ready to go for 2020. Yeah. Thanks guys for watching this video. Mm -hmm. If you guys like to give us a thumbs up and subscribe because it helps us out. Um, so yeah, we just did uh, t uh, 20, 20, no, 20 West Virginia. West Virginia. Uh, next uh, next time we'll be doing a uh, was it 19 Army, which is a really good team Exciting. heading into uh, 2019. Exciting team. Yeah. Right. Thanks guys.